Okay, good morning, guys. I am getting ready to head out to the RV. Not before I make some coffee, though. And I'm moving my coffee station right over to here. <laughs> Simply because one of my uh, options for the area that used to house the dinette in the RV is using that table back there that I now use for coffee. I really like that table. It has like the cutting board top on it. It's kind of messed up and, you know, dirty and stained and that. But I figure I want to take the top off and uh, and then I can use a couple of those bars that you use. They're, they basically look like this thing, you know, but they're about 27 inches, 22, 27 inches. And then you stick one or two of them on the bottom here. And then there's like a, a mount on the floor that you stick it into and that holds up your table. And then that way, it doesn't have to be a permanent table. Um, I can take it down, I can put it up, whatever I want to do with it. Because it is a little bit big for that space. Um, just because when I put in a new couch, the couch takes up so much more space. And actually, it's only a few inches. But when space is very important, that's a lot of space. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take this apart today and see if this will work in there. I'm just going to take the top off take it out to the RV and um, see if that will work. That might be a, a good little uh, table that can double as an office space. Um, but yeah, in looking at the bottom of this, I can see that I can do exactly what I want to do, which is just get to this part, just the top, the flat top. That's all I want. And it has these, I don't even know what you call them, like these star, I don't know if the, yeah, there you go. These four-sided star screws in there. All I had to do though was remove those on each side and uh, pull this whole contraption off here. And then we'll be good to go. But the first thing I need to do is change my shirt. <laughs> the other part of this is that I have this stuff. Let's see. Um, okay, this right here I ordered from Amazon. You attach this on the bottom of the tabletop and this holds the keyboard slides in and out so you don't have to have it on top and this right here there's a yeah this actually um screws on to the back of the table and then this holds two monitors where i have my enormous launch pad system in here <laughs> i don't have to abandon that completely now i'm not going to use um, enormous monitors here. I actually have smaller monitors upstairs that will work better for that space. I love my big monitors, but, uh, you know, you got to make some sacrifices, so. I'm not sure if I will replace my chair or not. That's a nice big chair, and I love it. However, the hydraulics on it don't work anymore. Like, if you lift it up, it automatically goes back down when you sit on it. And you can see, like, the leather on here is getting kind of crunchy. The fake leather, of course. And, uh, you know, just the softness is wearing out of it. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to be picky. I don't have to go spend more money on a chair. So, I'll probably put that one in there for a while, at least. I think it does have some, uh, some life left in it. So, we'll be good to go there. Anyways, let's, uh, where did I put, oh, keys are in my pocket. Let's get on the road here. I'll go get those, um tools, get back here, take that stuff apart, and we'll get an office built today. There was just a gopher friend out there as I was coming in. There's like a big field behind me. There's all kinds of critters out there. I don't think I want any of those critters in here wreaking havoc, but uh, all right, let's find my tools here that I need. Now I need to figure out where I'm going to get these chrome pedestals for the table because I need three of them. Two for this table and one for the little table that's going to go in the front between those two, uh, the two captain's chairs. Alright guys, I'm back home and of course I have a splitting headache but I'm going to work through it. I hate these things so bad, man. I get them so often. Um, and yes, I've been to the doctor for them. I, I went to the doctor for 30 years for headaches and nobody ever did anything for me. So, um, <laughs> but I have to get on eBay right now and order a couple of these pedestal legs. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here. 
it comes with two of these. You attach those to the floor, and uh, well, you attach one of them to the floor, one of them to the bottom of the table, and then basically when you're ready to set it up, you stick the pole down in there, and uh, the top of the table sits right down on top of the pole, and that's how you have a leg for your table. So this is... That actually looks plastic. Hmm. I'm going to have to look because I want something that is metal. Okay, yeah. So the pole is steel, but the bases are heavy plastic. Um, I think I'll give them a try. I'm going to get two of them to hold this one table. And I think that'll hold it sturdy, even if they are plastic. They're not going to be as durable as steel, but they'll be lighter weight, and uh, with two of them, it'll be durable enough, I think. Plus, it's a difference of about 20 bucks, so <laughs> that's definitely a good thing. I can get two sets of these for less than I would pay for one set if I get the one with the steel bases. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and get these. Confirm and pay. And there we go, guaranteed to arrive by Monday, June 15th. Okay, so, just about to remove this contraption here. And as I was looking at this, I was thinking, you know, I could have actually taken these legs right here and used two of them and actually built, like, a, uh, a little thing just like the base for those metal ones. And uh, I could have used two of these legs... And just, like I said, you know, made the bases, attached them to the to the uh, table and to the floor, and uh, saved the money. But, you know what? I don't care. Um, that's a lot more work. It would have allowed me to get it done today. However, I'll just wait till Monday. I like those other ones anyway. And, uh, okay, I'll shut up and let's get this off of here. There's the base over there, and there's the top. So that, of course, this is the bottom of the top. <laughs> there's the top of the top, but that's a nice, heavy, thick cutting board right there. That's cool. I really like that idea. Look how messed up it is there, but I'm going to uh, see what I can do to make that look better. Actually, I don't know. I might just clean it up a little bit and leave it like that. I kind of like it like that. There's something to be said about the, like, the weathering, you know, the aging, and all the use that it's gone through. But with everything else in the RV being so nice and new and crisp and clean, I think it would drive me absolutely crazy if I just left it like that. Yeah, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and refinish it, since it is a legit cutting board, cutting table, cutting block, whatever you call the thing. <laughs> that will be totally awesome. I can get um, an electric orbital sander from Walmart for only 20 bucks, and even with the uh, the sanding pads, it should still only be about 25, 30 bucks, which would be a lot less than I would have had to pay for an awesome table like that. And being that I already have the chair, I already have the plastic thing to put down on the carpet for my chair to roll around on, um, I'm not going to be spending any more money than that. So basically, it'll be 30 bucks for the sander that I can use on down the road at any time. Um, it was $30 for the two table legs. I don't remember how much I paid for those other things I showed you. The, uh, the monitor holder, I think that was 40, 50 bucks, and the other thing was like 40 bucks or something like that, maybe only 25. I don't remember. But I'll probably have, you know, around 150 bucks tied up in the whole thing in that office area, and that's not too shabby. So there's this cheapy one right here, 1388. That would be perfectly fine, only it appears they are sold out of that. So the choices are orbital or the detail sander. So I think I'm going to go with the orbital. Right here, 1983. That will work. It's a good year, too. I do wish they had a pack that had, like, multiple different kinds of grit. This is an 80. Here's a 60 that's real coarse. I mean, I could see using that, but then having to go down to 120, maybe. 
but I'm not gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> um, all right, let's go for this one right now. There's 12 of these in there, so what whatevsies. I think it's more important right now uh, to get out all the grooves and everything. So when it comes down to it, if I need to, I'll use a higher grit to, uh, to sand it a little bit better. Make it a little bit more smooth in the end before we stain it. Okay, so I got the orbital sander and I think it was the 80 grit. Um, I looked for some stain, but all they had was like giant cans for exterior stuff. And uh, I'm probably just gonna go to Lowe's to find some or order some. I saw some online called like Mahoney's or something like that. So uh, I don't know, we'll see what I can find. This is cool, look at this guys. I'm opening up my, uh, my sander here and it actually came with a couple of different grits. Um, 80, 120, what's the other one? 60, 80, and 120. Cool. I must have left my tripod at the RV, so I'm not going to film while I'm actually doing this. But this is what it looks like before I get started. You can see it's kind of stained, you know, coffee cup stains and coffee stains. There's cuts and stuff all over it. I'm going to do my best to just sand out all those grooves. And uh, I'll sand around the edges and everything. We'll see how this turns out. All right, we got one layer taken off of there. I started with the 60 grit. That's the uh, the most, the roughest one, I guess you'd say. And it is smoothing these out, but it's going to take a little while to get most of the deep ones out. But you can see it's coming along. I just put another one on here. It's a 60. No, it was a 60 I used. I just put an 80 on there. So we'll give it another run here. Okay guys, I've been at it for a little while here. I got it all cleaned up nice. So here it is guys. This is how it looks now. Now of course I haven't put any stain or anything on it yet, but you can see I got out like every one of those cuts, the grooves. Um, on, the f on film here it shows a little darker than it actually is. But, uh, but yeah, that turned out really, really nice. I did all around the edges here and everything. All around the entire tabletop. So, it looks really nice. And it is ready for some stain and some polyurethane. So, here's the bottom of it. I was actually going to uh, sand that as well and stain it. But there really is no reason to do that. I know this is going to be the bottom. Um, we got the holes in it from the other parts that were screwed on there. So I'm just not going to mess with that. This side looks wonderful as it is. So we're going to keep it at that. And with that in mind, I guess it's time for a trip to Lowe's. Okay, so I want to get some finish, some stain here. In fact, this looks like the right thing right here. Golden Oak Minwax. That looks perfect. That's only five bucks. We'll grab some of these staining pads. And here is some wipe on polyurethane. I think we'll do that. Actually, I think we'll go for the gloss. That other one was satin. Look at this, guys. I cannot believe how super clean and smooth this thing is. This thing turned out great. So yeah, I got some, uh, some gloves. I got the golden oak wood finish, the gloss wipe on polyurethane, and then I got staining pads. So I'm not going to use any brushes. There's four of these pads in here. Basically with everything, I'll just have to like pour it on and then use these to wipe it all around. So I'll have to be very careful not to let it drip onto the floor or anything. But I just really like the idea of doing it that way instead of using a, uh, a brush. Because like the brush, the bristles can throw the stuff. And I knew I was going to have to do this in the house. So yeah, I'm just going to use these staining pads. Alright, so I went ahead and put a coat of that stain on. This is how it looks. Not too shabby. It actually made it, um, I mean, just the same color as it was originally, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, there's a couple of dark spots in here, but that's actually the wood. I thought that this was uh, like stains from before the dark spots, but it's not. That's actually the wood in there. And I am getting anxious 
to put, what the heck is this? What in the world? It kind of looks like scratches here. Like new scratches. I wonder if I did that when I flipped this stupid top over. Holy crap. Well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I bet you I did that when I flipped the top over to show you guys the bottom. Oh, well, whatever. I don't care. Unless they're just so deep that I didn't notice them before. Because, I mean, you do really have to look to see them. <laughs> Maybe it just showed up after that stain uh, penetrated through the wood there. Oh, well, you can't hardly even see it anyways. And since I have the stain on there already, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, polyurethane on there. I'm probably going to put two to three coats, get it nice and thick and shiny. And uh, then I'll show you guys how it looks. Okay, guys, it is like, I don't know, three days later. This is how the table's looking. You can see it's got a nice shine going right now. Right now it still is a little bit wet. It's been tricky actually doing this because I have probably seven or eight coats on there of the polyurethane. Maybe even more. Um, basically, it's a wipe-on polyurethane. You're supposed to be able to put it on just like a rag, like this, and wipe it on. And it did not work that easy. Um, the first... I don't know, four or five coats. Yes, I got SpongeBob on. <laughs> the first four or five coats just like soaked right into the table. Then as I ran my hand across it, I could feel that it needed to be sanded again. But I was kind of hesitant. So I took the finest grit that I had, which I think was a 220, and I went over the table today. And then I went ahead and put on another coat, and it really, really easily this time went on. Uh, it seemed to actually give it a nice glaze. You can kind of see it there, you know, shining on there. And that's exactly what I wanted it to look at, and I was not getting that before. But uh, I am getting it now. I think this is my third coat today after I first sanded it. I did sand it between one of the coats again, and uh, I will probably put another one to two coats on there, actually. I'll probably let that um, dry through the night. And if it needs it, tomorrow I will sand it again, really fine, and then I will uh, put another coat on there. But in the end, this is going to be a really, really nice tabletop.